and it's about that time. My name is Joe K. This is Selection Radio. It feels just like the old times when we first started about, let me say, 280 shows ago <laughs> in K-Beach days, man. This guy right here, in front of me, man, representing London, UK, I have to say, you're definitely one of the reasons I started doing radio. Wow. Like, that's a fact. And that must be a trip for you to hear. <laughs> here we are on Beats One. Welcome, Giles Peterson. Pleasure to be here. It's great to be here. Um, I tell you what's great about this place is that I can put the the, the headphones on really loud. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> yeah. Some volume in this studio. Oh, it's great. Man. I, I bang. I've, I've probably blown out a few speakers here <laughs> already. <power. laughs> they it's say good. when they want a sound check, they, they have me come on and I just play some tunes and they're like, all right, if it's a selection approved, then it's good. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, I got my USB key with me. You've been playing some pretty hot tracks so far um, before we started off the show. So I'm not, <laughs> I'm not leaving empty handed today. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. Uh, before you go to, J- you're going to Japan soon. Yeah, I'm going out on Monday. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to get you lace, making sure you're representing. Uh, what brings you out to Los Angeles this time? Around? I was, uh, I was here to um, introduce my new radio platform, which is called Worldwide FM. So we did a little pop-up um, for a few days. I put on a party as well with We Transfer called uh, How We Do LA, which was a brilliant opportunity for me to curate a, a lineup to celebrate the influence and the power of LA at the moment. And um, over the last few years, it's been such a golden period, I feel. So I managed to get the likes of Sarah Creative Partners back together again because I feel that they really had a, Legend. Big, a big part to play in sort of the, the renaissance and... Uh, I managed to get hold of people like Bilal and Napalm from Hytus Coyote, Bad Bad Not Good, Kamasi Washington. Wow. And, uh, George Clinton came over as well. So the best moment of the night was actually seeing um, George Clinton with Sara, with Jametta Rose, um, with Rosie Dame, all just getting down to Hollywood. And it was a great co- a great night, beautiful venue as well at the um, at the Ace Theatre, the legend, just beautiful place, right? Yes. And uh, yeah, we had a brilliant time. So I've been doing that, running about, trying to do a couple of record fairs, going to hook up with Egon later on and try and find some, some rare, records. Some rare records. So let me ask you, when do you sleep? When do I sleep? Well, you know, I find time. I find time. You know, I'm actually training for the marathon at the moment. So wow. I've got, um, so funnily enough, when you're, in, when you're fit and healthy, I only need five hours, you know? You're it, right. It's true, I right? I agree. So, um, you know, just make sure you balance the partying well. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so you know, it's been amazing. Had a really great time seeing a lot of old friends. Been coming here for years, of course. And uh, going back to the days of clubs like Brass and Orlando and the days of the far side and bringing over the brand new heavies. And so that was like 20 years ago. And just the, the bubble um, in continuing with all my friends here, you know, going to clubs like The Lift and uh, people like Jeremy Soul oh, and all Casey, that. People from crowd. KCRW. Yeah, all that crowd. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's a wonderful place to be. Yeah, um, I have to say, I mean, Everything you do is well curated from your radio show to you have an award show, you have a festival and um, you, you guys have, have got to play at the festival. Yes. Yeah. Soul Action is missing. It's the missing link for the last 10, we'll, 11 we'll years. T- we'll talk about that yeah. later. But, I, you know, I've been watching from afar. I want to say your festival, along with uh, Outlook and a few others. Um, I know Lefto does Door, um, Dower Door. Yeah. And um, there's a few other ones that Dimension, Sonar. Those are some festivals that. I've been uh, keen on for the last eight years, and I just cannot wait, you know, to be a part of that. But again, everything you do, I mean, you came out and you brought out some legends. I mean, I haven't seen, I haven't heard of Saw Ra performing in, in I don't know how long. And seven years. Yeah, seven years. So, <laughs> how does that feel to be the one to get these guys out, you know, on the stage? Yeah, well, it's great. You know, I think that we've always had a good posi- position to be in in the UK, where we can kind of listen to music from around the world and bring it in when it's early, even when it's almost too early for its own home com- home place. You know, so places like people like the Roots and people like <laughs> Pharrell. And people like Sarah, a lot of those, Erica, um, Jill Scott, a lot of those kind of artists, they kind of needed that UK European break before they could come back to the States and really blow up massive. So I've got a lot of connections with a lot of those guys. And Sarah, I brought them over to the UK several times back in the day and festivals in Europe as well. And I've been in touch, of course, with Amas and Shafiq Hussein and Taz for, for years. So it just felt right, you know, it just felt, especially at the moment with this, like, you know, sort of post Kendrick Lamar, post sort of all this great music music coming through whether it's the hip-hop side the soul jazz or the jazz side jazz is making a comeback and so is gospel music you know it's always been there but i feel it's very uh prominent right now yeah it's like everything it's like things aren't in categories anymore you know people are ready to mix it all up and it's sort of category list so so all these original brilliant artists are just getting on and doing their thing brilliantly it's just good music timeless music yeah so it's, it's finally happening 
we we were chatting earlier and um i was kind of giving you a little heads up that i'm gonna take you through a giles peterson journey uh, from my perspective when i started uh i gotta say yourself um benji b marianne hobbs lefto i used to call you guys uh or you guys still are the fantastic four right and and <laughs> we when should i do a party together yo yo that'd be an amazing party <laughs> and when i was in college you know you guys helped me get through it so i didn't bbc was was a, was the a vibe you know and and that's all i would listen to and you know I, I had to do a lot to stand out i had to rip music i had to just get unreleased music go to parties get flash drive cds do whatever it takes to stand out with my mixes and my podcast at the time but i remember just ripping segments so this segment uh is probably one of my favorite uh interview segments of all time and it's with the neptunes and giles peterson so let's get into that and kind of just go back to the journey. I think the people really need to know uh, your history and how many legends you have interviewed and been a part of the process of the story and, and their progression as an artist. So let's get into it right now. Are we rolling? Okay, now DJ, we want you to do what you want to do. Do what you do, come in, and make it happen. You gotta talk. You know what, I wanna know a little bit about the Neptunes before we talk about N-E-R-D. You've just come to the UK. We got Pharrell, we got Chad in with us worldwide. A little brief visit. There's a party tonight, launch of the album. But first of all, let's just talk a little bit about how you guys started. Well, it was black in the universe. And then there was light. And then there I was. And then my dad gave me a drum machine and I said, Pops, plug it up. Let's play. Then I went like this. And then... My mom snapped her fingers, then got pregnant, then had me. I elbowed Chad and made a beat, and it sounded <laughs> like... <laughs> and that was the Neptunes <sighs> born. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Actually, classic rock. And hip hop had a baby, and his name is NERD. Which stands for? No one ever really dies. <laughs> Nobody ever really dies. And no one ever really dies. For me, it was a real pleasure to kind of hear the production yeah. sound go to another level <clears throat> and to hear you guys singing as well, because there'd Thank obviously you. been the stuff that you'd been working on, starting off with. Well, the first thing I heard was the Noriega mm -hmm. tune. Did you do stuff before that? Yeah. We did Tonight's Tonight for Black Street. We did uh, Use Your Heart for SWV. <laughs> We did. Why are you over there looking at me? Why my girl standing here? <laughs> And then um, basically it was it was the super fog, and then it was kind of the, obviously the whole Khalees thing. Yeah, I actually just heard a track recently called Little Susie that I think you've done. I don't know if oh, that's going to be for oh, your album that. or some. It's for her album. Her album, a little bossa nova. Little bossa nova. Beautiful. Thanks. Something for the coffee shop. So yeah. I didn't, but you didn't get. I didn't get um. Legend. Wow. <laughs> and hold up, we're not done. We're not done. Check this out. <laughs> yes. What's the deal, y'all? How y'all feeling out there? It's your man's Jay Dilla checking in. You know how we do. It's worldwide. Radio One, you know how we do. So, you know, glad to be here. What's going on, y'all? Oh, uh, feeling it. Oh. 
Oh, yes, yes. Hello, hello there, hello there. So lovely to be back in London. Uh. J. Dilla, Dilla, Dilla. Worldwide. Chilling with my man, Giles Peterson, dog. Radio One. You know how we do. Okay, with a title, Welcome to Detroit. Let's welcome you to Detroit. Well, the, the realness is, is about that. I mean, the compilation basically came about from a breakbeat album idea that uh, Peter from uh, BPE had, which turned into giving JD 100% creative control. Basically, he let me do whatever I wanted to do, so I wanted to put people on there. You know, who's... Man, how do you feel listening back to that, man? Because that's wow. a legend. To hear these guys mention your name and really support the show, that's... That's legendary. I, I, I'm <laughs> striving to get to that point. You know what I'm saying? I haven't listened to those things, actually. <laughs> it's mad to hear it, actually. That's quite a long time ago. I've, I feel younger in it. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's amazing. I mean, I've been so blessed to be able to meet all these people. I was lucky because I got to meet people like Questlove and work with Questlove at The Roots and uh, Tribe Called Quest, really early days. And being on the radio since the age of 16 and on pirate radio in the UK and doing my thing, which was slightly left of centre, where sort of hip hop meets jazz and heritage music. You know, I managed to get through a lot of those kind of great people and get to meet them and be friends with a lot of them. You know, people like Madlib, who's here, I think he's one of the great greats of, of our time. And going through to people like Flying Lotus and uh, all these guys in the middle. I remember I was very close to Premier and to Guru and Gangstar and, and that whole period. You know, they'd come to the UK and we'd kind of get into it because there wasn't so much. It was still pretty much an underground scene. So, you know, it was kind of easier to get them. Yeah, you know? <laughs> compared to now. Yeah, to compared to now. So, yeah. you know, you get them at the very beginning now. But like I think that's the best thing is that you caught them in their raw artist form, you know, when they were uh, very vulnerable, but very, I don't want to say hungrier, but it, it was just a different part of their career and they were just more willing, you know, now it's like they're comfortable. and. I think a lot of them are protected. I think it's yeah. protection. I think most of the artists are the same as they always were, but there's just so much in it now that there are so many more layers of protection. So sometimes it's just hard to get through. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, if you're there early enough, as you guys are and as like we all like to be, we're just mad for music. You know, that's all we're looking for. The moment a little thing pops up on online, you find it. It's like, I remember the Bad Bad Not Good when they came out as the odd trio. That was their first thing. It came out. It was a, a cover version of a, of, a, of, a, of a Tyler track, Goblin, I think they did. And yep. uh, I managed to get it and play it on the radio. And then they became Bad Bad Not Good. And they're getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And it's just lovely to be part of that, that growth. Of, that journey is yeah. wonderful. Even for you to be a part of the, you know, you have your own award show, Worldwide uh, Awards, correct? And to have some of these artists like the internet and them to be on there and have a chance to win their first award before they, you know, the internet was nominated for a Grammy and, and to see them have that opportunity and, and get recognized across the world, I think that's a great part, you know, and I, and I think that's so amazing that you do not just the radio show, but you do the festival and these other things to give back and, and to spread the sound, you know, that's so important. I think it's really, I think our job as well as people who play music, curate music, is to encourage the new generation as well. and. You know, you need that first little bit of, <clears throat> of love, you know, and to be able to see where you fit into the community. Uh, another one that I'm really proud of at the moment is Little Sims, the, the UK hip hop singer. I think Kendrick called her one of the three top people around the world that yep. he really is looking at. And she's a straight up independent girl. She came and she won the award and she was so happy. And I knew that she was going to be, this is the first of many for her, you know, and it's just lovely to see that Amy Winehouse was another one, you know, she kind of, you know, no one was interested in Amy Winehouse at the very beginning. It took a while before she got a record deal. Wow. So playing sort of, um, you know, her first demos on the radio and to see what kind of legend she became, that's very enjoyable and, and, and a wonderful part of the job that we all do. Yeah. Now, pirate radio is a big part of your story. And I know that you're what, about 14, 15 when you first started? Yeah, yeah, in, yeah. In a garden, your neighbor's garden shed, right? My garden shed. Or, or your garden <laughs> shed. Right, okay. And then you had, you were able to, you were met, you managed to get a transmitter. Yeah. Right? And the way you kind of, how, how'd you put together a signal and, and, and start your own radio show back I then. was really bad with technology and, uh, you know, getting and building stuff like that. But I was quite good at kind of um, recording tracks on my double twin decks. And uh, so basically I got myself, luckily at the time, a very small transmitter and, uh, and an engineer who was very keen to do anything. And we'd record uh, on, a, on a cassette. 
um, 90 yeah. minute show and uh, we'd go and broadcast from the highest point in South London <laughs> and how, uh, ma- how many listeners were tuning oh, in at the oh, time a couple you know we, do, we, <laughs> we used to sit in the phone box and uh, we'd give a phone number out and if we got one phone call that was the best buzz ever <laughs> and uh, so that was really how I started and one of the well the very first pirate radio station in London that played black music soul music was a station called Radio and Victor and the guy who built their transmitter also built my transmitter and they got busted one week by mm-hmm. the by the government and uh, they called me up and they said, listen, we heard you've got a transmitter. And, uh, and I said, yes. They said, can we borrow it? And I said, no problem as long as you give me a show. So that was my, <laughs> that was, that was my first original. Smart. That was my hustle. And, uh, you know, you've got to remember, you've got to hustle to survive at all times in this game. Yo, that's real. <laughs> that is so real. Let's keep it moving with the music here. Sitting down with Giles Peterson. This is pretty legendary as radio host to radio host and, and just uh, true music lovers in the world. So... Let's get into uh, some more timeless music, and we'll be right back here on Soul Action Radio with Giles Peterson. Beats one, keep it locked. So I was like, wait, hold up, hold up, hold up. Um, as, I, as I promised you earlier, I'm going through Tunes, uh, the story of Giles Peterson, your label, Brownswood. And uh, it's funny, uh, off air right now, you said, is this Sango? And, and you know what? It's happened to me, my own discography from our artists. I've been like, oh, what's that? And they're like, oh, you, this is your guys' music. <laughs> but you caught on, though. This is um, legendary Mala. Um, and I wanted to get into this song because Mala and Cuba, this was the project that I felt really, really got my attention in terms of you as a label head and, and realizing that your relationships with the artists, you know, was strong. I mean, for Mala to be able to go to Cuba and, and, and record this, this project and, and it's so powerful and kind of step outside of his comfort zone sure. and make, you know, Cuban inspired music, but also it's still so full and it has like this this bass, you know, his elements of what he does. I, I thought, man, th- this is when I realized, and, and along with all the compilations you've done, you know, the Brownswood Bubblers and, and the Electric compilations as well. Those are projects that all of us here back home were really listening to, you know. But let's speak about Mela and, and why is it that, what is it about the Cuban culture that you're so inspired by well well i mean i was lucky enough to go to cuba seven years ago i was invited over there to work on a compilation album and uh, it was really the idea was just to go and f- listen to music and to try and just collect it and put it on a record but there wasn't really anything available there was lots of great live music going on and lots of little underground scenes but no one was recording it so i basically said let's record an album so i basically brought a bunch of different people together um, that I thought were really representing the new Cuban scene from jazz musicians to reggaeton musicians to MCs and singers and uh, that was called Havana Cultura and we continued the series it went sort of stronger and bigger and eventually I thought let's try and switch something so on our second record um, I decided to make a record in the more traditional sense like the first one but I wanted to bring somebody over from the UK who represented the kind of new bass music scene who could basically just take the stems that we were doing in one studio and turn his version of it in the other studio. And the first person that came to my mind, of course, had to be Mala, because Mala represents, on one hand, being the godfather of, I suppose, dubstep, but also being somebody who is that fine line between where we are now and sound system culture. So there's that reggae thing, that reggae reggae ethos about how he goes about his sound and his productions and his presentation. And so he was the perfect person, an incredible guy, um, and uh, he was up for it. He was interested in doing something different. Put him out, as you said, put him out of his comfort zone, and uh, he he loved it. I mean, let me uh, ask you: you going to Cuba, you know, a place where they speak a different language, mm. and you being, you know, a different skin color, just everything, just everything about you. How how were you able to get accepted by the people there and, and embraced? 
I was very lucky that I started working with two people, a guy called um, Edre from a group called Ogiri and uh, Roberto Fonseca, who's uh, one of the world's leading pianists. Yeah. And uh, he was fully aware of what I was uh, about and my, my culture and uh, my sort of influence outside of Cuba. And uh, so he opened the doors for me. You know, you wow. can't just go in there as an exactly. outsider. You need to go in. And I was very fortunate to go in with the right people who led me to the right places in the suburbs, in the outer areas of, of Havana you know I'd find sort of these guys who just collected Dilla cassettes <laughs> you know you find the most crazy people who are absolutely obsessed by sort of the things that you think would never get into Cuba so you know I found the people um, I found the talent of course they've got incredible ability and technique whether it's the singers whether it's the players and uh, they've got a real hunger to work and uh, and to learn and so it's been a beautiful thing culminating actually I'm here as well in LA to um, finish recording an, a third album with a single called I'm at Daimia Arocena so we're working with Dexter Story Miguel Atwood Ferguson's doing yep. some strings on her album and we're mixing her vocals this weekend as well nice so, so it's, you're you just, know, <laughs> it seems like you're just doing this constant world tour and and it's like this process of curating and, and connecting and di rediscovering so you're kind of taking uh, contemporary sounds and, and people that you've had relationships with and, and continuing to, to kind of progress the sound. And I'm really happy about that. Let's continue the musical journey again with Giles Peterson. And you're going to be doing a set for us as well. Yes, sir. All right. For sure. Once again, Mala in Cuba. <laughs> yeah, man. Okay, GP, Soul Action Radio. <laughs> <laughs> Very rare, man. This is pretty legendary. This is one of those shows I'll probably look back at in like five, ten years and be like, yep. <laughs> right now, I think we're just kind of filling each other out and catching a vibe, but I, I feel like this is a beginning of a long overdue relationship, you know, that, that's been, um, the people have been wanting, man. Uh, worldwide, Giles Peterson, Brownswood, Soul Action. So I feel the radio show, you know, is always a, a good introduction to get, as you know, to get acquainted with the guests. As I'm sure you bring a lot of people into your radio show and then you end up booking them for your festival or other things. So this is uh, very, very important as well as the song behind us, Azimuth, and as well as that we had to go back to back with that vocalist um, off of Mallow in Cuba. What's the name of that vocalist? Because that dude is, is crazy. His his, yeah, his voice range. He's is. called Tresera, and uh, he um, he's out there right now with Chucho Valdez. So okay. he's quite hard to get out and go touring with because he's always around the world with Chucho. But sometimes he's in, he'll be in Cuba and we'll just catch him. <laughs> he's, a, he's a don. It's that rumba thing. D does he have uh, a whole catalog of music like like what we just heard? Not really, no, oh, no, no, exactly. He's one of those ones. He's, uh, yeah, you've got to, you got to get him in the studio. There's not many of the Cuban musicians who are able to record, you know, unless they're with one of the big superstar Cuban Why musicians. Why is that? Because there's no record industry left over there. You know, there's one record label, Egram, and it tends to just release <coughs> the most popular musicians. But, but they don't just, I mean, you don't even need a label nowadays. You could just self-release. These guys aren't self-releasing their own music. There's not even internet, you know, in Cuba. So at That's the end crazy. of the day, it's, it's no idea. It's a whole other game, really. But, um, you know, the one place there is in Cuba, I really want to make this happen. There's one studio called Egrem in um, Old Havana. It's, it's the most beautiful. It's like the Vatican of, of studios. It's the most... You walk into the room and the spirit of history is unbelievable um, there's no desk so it's really terrible you have to bring your own equipment in but the actual live room is amazing so I really want to get Kamasi over there I want to get Robert Glasper over there I want to get the best American jazz musicians <laughs> to play with the Cuban singers that would be an amazing experience that will and, and I also know you have a, a big love as well for Brazil Yes, of and, course. And the Brazilian music culture. Sure. Speak about that briefly. Well, um, yeah, I went to Brazil for the first time as well. I was about 23 years old. I was buying records. I was introduced to Brazilian music, I think, by George Duke, um, the, you know, the American musician who made an album called Brazilian Love Affair. And I bought it because there was a kind of disco boogie track on there that they used to play on the radio. And then when I bought the album, it went deep into Brazilian music, the real thing. And that's when I discovered people like Milton Nascimento and Flora Purim and Aieto. And that was my kind of way into that world and by going over to Brazil I realized that there was a massive industry a lot of the music had never got out of Brazil because of the military dictatorship so there was a bit of a closed doors attitude so when you went in there as a 
just a fan of music, a record collector, you found these record stores with millions of records and they were all amazing. So I've basically been collecting them and of course since then the likes of J-Rock and Mad Lib and Egon and so many others have gone over there and they've started using a lot of the tracks like the one in the background. background. And oh, they're uh, very okay. Yeah, incredible stuff. And there's just so much music in Brazil, even if you don't know the words. It just feels good. It feels good. Yeah. You know, when I... Sango and I recently got back from there for our first time. We played uh, four different cities in four days. It's pretty intense. So, uh, but just, he's not Brazilian, and to see him flip those samples and, and go out there and have the people reciting his wo the words the way he flipped it <laughs> was incredible. I got to show you some video, but that's how I knew, uh, you know, that they're, they're really about their music out there incredible. and their energy. Yeah. So I'm really, I cannot wait to go back to Brazil, and I got to admit, even... I still listen to this album to this day behind us, No Boat Love the Soul. And um, yeah, man, they, they have an amazing culture. And we also played that George Duke earlier. Now you talked about record digging. I heard you have about 50, over 50,000 records that you've collected. Is that true? Well, I, 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 haven't, I haven't counted them, uh -huh. for, but I have like three properties full of records. So, you know, I've got my old house. I've got a big lock up behind my house wow. and I've got my house so <laughs> they take over. I didn't want them to get into my kind of living house but they are in there now. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm addicted straight up, you know. I can't go past a record store or flea market without having a little so, sniff so around. So you spend a lot of money on records. Yeah, but I mean <laughs> equally, you know, I'll, you know, the best pleasure you can have out of records is when you find something for nothing and it's just got an incredible track on it and there's a lot of really obvious records out there that have got incredible music on it. So it doesn't have to be expensive to be great right um but yes i have gone far i've gone deep um i did you know i have spent a lot of my i mean to be honest with you all the money that i earn as a dj and as a record label boss um until the age of 30 went on records you know it was only after the age of 30 that i started kind of you know sort of <laughs> putting it aside <laughs> or buying wine and other things of course of course let's keep the music going uh, we have s still quite so much to talk about and um once again here on selection radio with Giles peterson Let's get into some Ab Joe, a nice flip of Arthur. Yeah, once again, this is Ab Joe. Wow. Yeah, and, oh. that's, and that's what we do, man. We, we're right up there with you, you know, uh, getting inspired by these classic samples and trying to reintroduce it to the younger generation, which that's is where we so come from. That's so good. Um, Ab Joe is just delivering tr track after track. track. Um, Ab Joe Sango. Can you can you do you Sango and Abjo next year? Oh yeah, three of you. Hell yeah, back to back. <laughs> wow, please I'm, do it. Okay, I love him. Yeah, love let us you. yo let us know. We we are there, bro. Wow. And I know uh, Sango is a, a, a huge supporter of you, and I know Abjo the whole the whole selection squad. So that's why, you know, it it took to bring you here, and 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 sometimes that's what it takes to play these records for you in front of you and to see your reaction. Um, because I, I know your style, I know your taste so well. That's soulful. What does this artist mean to you? <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> I love him. I mean, you know, you can't, you know, you can't miss a beat with D'Angelo. You know, the other guy that I love as well, and I think that he's vastly underrated um, globally. Of course, we all love D'Angelo. It's, 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 it's bread and butter. Um, Bilal, man. Bilal, when is Bilal gonna be the mega star? Well, you hear this in the background. <laughs> I have to agree, Bilal, um, amazing writer and performer. Very slept on, but He's respected highly by the OGs, I feel like. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. If you just keep it cool and then we can get to the center of the right. Take it back, Lord. 
You know who else is underrated? One of my favorites as well. Oh, Dwale, man. Wow. And you put this out as well um, on your Giles P- Peterson Presents Worldwide compilation. But Dwale, man, has to be one of my favorite vocalists as well that I think is just slept on, but respected as well by the heads, you know? She's my eighth grade English teacher of paradise. One red Macintosh a day, I'm sure will suffice. I take a class, and that's huh. why I pass. That's funny because, um, Yep. Whatever year that was, I remember I was in Miami Winter Music Conference and I got two CD, CDs at the time given to me, promos. One of them was Dwele, seven unreleased tracks, and one of them was the very first NERD album. Wow. And they both came to me on the same night. Isn't that weird? You know, <laughs> that was a golden, and I remember that's all I listened to for like three months. <laughs> wow. I don't blame you. <laughs> yeah, it was deep. That was an amazing era of music as well. Yeah. It was, just, it was its own thing. I think this is the, right now, we're close to that. We're yeah. there. We're there again. We are. You know? I think so. And and that's why you're here in Los Angeles, and I actually wanted to end it on a good note so we could get right into your set because, um, I feel like you have a lot of gems to play for us, but who's your, uh, who are some artists that you're looking for? I mean, you have like the Kamasi Washingtons, you have the internet, you have Bad Bad Not Good, Anderson Pack, who's had, I mean, every time I see his name, it's like one step above, you know, it's like the next level. Yeah, yeah, he's interesting. Um, I mean, of course, it's great to have been able to see his rise and uh, where he's gonna go. His live show is phenomenal. Yep. Um, so big up to him, all those guys, uh, you know, Knowledge, all these great producers that are out there at the moment. I'm kind of, I, I just did a thing yesterday with Jametta Rose, actually, and uh, she's been on quite a lot of records recently, including the new one with Shafiq Hussain, the new I Said album, and she did a little a cappella thing in the studio, and she blew my mind. Did she? Yeah, I mean, I've heard a lot of sort of singers sing a cappella, but she was phenomenal. I think she's a local um, L.A lady and uh, she's incredible what do you so. think about that young lady from um i forgot what part of uh, the uk she's from but georgia smith oh uh, i don't know her oh, stuff. you haven't heard her no, stuff no. okay you gotta look you gotta peep game she kind of looks like sade and she has a kind of has a vibe of like a lauren hill and like amy winehouse have you got a little yeah. track um i do i'll actually play that for you behind the scenes because you got to get into this music and this track right here dolly turn your lights on another track that put me on like dang but um, before we get to this music, one last thing. For all the young listeners and all the people who've been following you, with all the technology that we have you know, nowadays, it's a bit of, of uh, I guess, oversaturation, a lot of distraction. How, as, as a musician specifically, how do you stand out, in your opinion? Like, what does it take to, to just get to that next level? Passion and commitment and a collective and a community and that's it you know if you've got <laughs> it and you can in, 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 and you've got the passion you're going to make it happen it's as simple as that and uh, don't give up it'll come in the end perfect that was the best answer i've heard in a very long time here with giles peterson don't go nowhere we're about to get into a very exclusive set gp times joe k selection keep it locked <laughs> 